Like, I mean, Drake bombed with this last album for the most part. Like, doesn't he have seven by top Drake's, ten songs? Yeah, but like by Drake's standards, it's like how's that a bomb? It's, it's it's always gonna be a commercial success with Drake, but he just has so many fans. But like rap, the rap world was like this. You just mailed this shit in. Like, there's no. It's just the same exact songs you've been doing forever. Yeah. So they say he's gonna take some time off. J. Cole and, and Kendrick Lamar already like take a lot of time in between projects. Like if those guys are gone. Someone said some old school rapper was like, they don't want to tell you this, but rap's down like sixty percent over the Yeah, I mean like yeah. it's it's the the genre is like it's disappearing, yeah. It's gone. Yeah. Today's episode of KFC Radio is sponsored by Stacker 2. Stacker 2 is loud, aggressive, and straight out of the Attitude Era. Just like me and Barstool, uh, we are OGs on the internet. Stacker 2 is the OG in the energy and supplement space. I mean, I come in nowadays, I do the podcast in the morning, I do Barstool Radio in the afternoon, we do an interview after Barstool Radio, I gotta do One Minute Man, then I'm usually on the go to pick up my kids, go to a baseball game, go to a gymnastics practice, go to a dance recital. It never stops, so I need Stacker or two chew gummies and energy shots to help me get through the day it's a small package with big energy the chew gummies are designed to give you maximum energy while still tasting amazing and they are a bite-sized burst of delicious energy the energy shots are a quick little sip with b12 vitamins that help you take on whatever comes your way both the gummies and the energy shots have 10,000 percent of your daily value of vitamin b12 There's no such thing as too much B12. There's no such thing as too much energy. And both of these, the Chewies and the Gummies, give you maximum energy. There's flavors like grape, uh, pink lemonade, and strawberry, uh, blue raspberry, all sorts of different flavors. They all taste good, and they all give you the energy you need. So bite back with the stack and go buy Stacker 2 Chew Energy Gummies and B12 Energy Shots at Dollar General, where you can find all your favorite Stacker 2 products, or go to (laughs) Stacker2.com. It's another edition of KFC Radio on the Barstool Sports Network. We're about to hit the road once again. We're coming to you in Cincinnati. Uh, Cincinnati, you'll already have missed us. That's right. (laughs) Cincinnati had a great time. Uh, And then tonight we'll be in um, Wisconsin. Columbus. Columbus. And then uh, Pittsburgh. There it is. The Berg, baby. We're coming to the Berg. Uh, a lot of tickets left in the Berg. A lot of tickets left in the Berg. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of tickets left in the Berg. We, we I, picked, saw, I saw your tweet today. I was like, oh, boy. We picked a, we picked a big venue in the Berg. <laughs> oh, 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 I know the venue. We did a Barstool Blackout show there. Yeah. Yeah. It's is probably it outdoors? No, but it's like a... They have an outdoor space. That, yeah. That's all I see on the website. Yeah. Are like, these the guys like, who are trying to charge us $10,000 for a, a projector? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. part of our... It's like in the shadow. I believe it's either owned by... There was some connection to the Rooney family. Either the Rooney family owns it or it's like in the shadow of the, the Steelers stadium. I forget which it is. <laughs> <laughs> shadow. So There so, isn't a Steelers game this weekend, so... So here, this. here's the... Uh, we, we a, part, a big part of our show is like an audio-visual thing where we put... Uh, we put shit on a big screen and almost every club has a projector a pull down screen tv screen something uh this club does not and we were like can we like get one and they were like yeah sure for three thousand dollars <laughs> buddy we're only gonna make a thousand <laughs> <laughs> we would lose two grand on this show we would lose two grand uh, so I, I they followed up with oh if you just want the screen because if you, like if you wanted to bring your own projector, BYOP, two uh, hundred for the screen. Yeah, it sounds about right. <laughs> yeah. But even that, two hundred dollars for me for you to pull down a fucking screen. <laughs> Fuck you guys. So Pittsburgh, you're in for a treat because we're just gonna fucking wing it. Uh, it's uh, it's basically this is the last live shows we'll ever be doing. So Pittsburgh is is uh, gonna be a doozy with no screen just, and just and knowing that we're not Pittsburgh. really going on tour ever again. We don't <laughs> really good. use much screen though. Uh, more than you think. Like what? Well, we played all those clips. Which ones? The shit our lawyers won't want to say. Yeah, that's like ten minutes, five minutes. Uh, there, what? There's a highlight right now in the show though of a clip we play, of like oh yeah, story. yeah, yeah, that's that's a big moment. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then I mean, yeah, the rest you don't really you don't really need it. It's just the company's it. It's like a picture. Yeah. You yeah, know, yeah. there's a lot of times we reference a picture. We we talk about the, the you right. Know, like, it's like it's watching like the podcast story. versus listening to the podcast. Yes. Yes. Yeah. It's it's still gonna be like a good show. But yeah, that's that's the perfect way to put it. It's like it's just enhanced with with what you can see. But um, for everybody in in uh, in Cincy, Columbus, and Pittsburgh, and then our final leg. Uh, ending in Buffalo in November. These are our last shows. 
So get it while you can. If you ever thought about coming to see KFC Radio, don't wait. Don't sleep. These are the times to do it because everybody else is going to go off and do other shit rather than tour uh, in the coming years. So get it in while you can. Uh, preferably about 400 more of you in Pittsburgh. <laughs> 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 Everywhere else is either like sold out or close to it, and then Pittsburgh. Have we got any fat. word on Detroit? Detroit's a massive venue, too. Um, let me check good? right now. <laughs> I've, I've only been looking at the... Detroit's one of the... It's the most beautiful venue I've ever seen. Really? really? Yeah, it's called the Majestic. It looks so nice. <laughs> yeah, it's probably for like real major acts. Let me see. Um, let's see. No, nah, it's not bad. We're at, okay. we're about halfway at Detroit. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. That's that's that'll be all right. We'll we'll get like another hundred in there, and we'll be we'll be in good shape. Um, but but the Berg, you know, <laughs> do your thing, <laughs> do your oh. thing. <laughs> um, oh, I got no, what do we got? I got nothing. Got? <laughs> <laughs> I did not give one one thought before we started. This stuff. <laughs> I had some shit I want to talk about. Uh, no, I can't remember. Uh. I guess I hadn't thought about it either. Classic. This podcast kicks ass. <laughs> Two things. First off, are you seeing the Mountain Dew response on my Twitter? No. Bro, I don't know what's going on. Motherfuckers are drinking Mountain Dew. Really? Like, one one, one guy was like, Mountain Dew like rules the corporate world. Like, all I see are men drinking Mountain Dew in, in corporate life. And pe- and I, I quote tweeted it being like, get the fuck out of here. And people are like, no, man, he's right. I, apparently, it's a regional thing that like, like any, basically, you know, how everyone's an animal outside of the Northeast. Well, listen, this all makes perfect sense. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. you know, poor you people know, drink it. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, you know how everyone I is never, fucking, I never debated that fact yeah yeah you know everyone's like from a trailer park that's like <laughs> yeah. e- east of uh, west of like Philadelphia everyone's in a fucking trailer park so uh, apparently those people just all day bro every day, everyone at my fucking industrial park in Toledo <laughs> drinks Mountain Dew <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's what I said <laughs> and then I'm getting you know like New York people are being like if I ever if anyone at work ever saw me drink anything other than water and coffee, I would kill myself. <laughs> like, the, there are guys who are saying that they, like, you know, they bring, like, a two-liter and start drinking it in the morning and just drink it throughat the day. I mean, that's insanity. That, like, that's wild. That mm-hmm. is nuts. But but even even with the whole rest of the country being poor, as we know, I'm still surprised by how many people were like, do the do, baby. <laughs> I couldn't believe it, man. Bro, if you and, are... And, and it was- <laughs> You were specifying diet. Like, that uh, yeah. fucking matters. <laughs> like, that fucking matters, man. You're already drinking radioactive nuclear soda. Whether it's diet or not, does not fucking matter. If you don't have dirt under your fingernails, you shouldn't be drinking that. <laughs> That's a good call. <laughs> and, you know, and, and you know what else, though? And you know what? If you do have dirt on your fingernails, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, go like, ahead. Like, go ahead yeah. and drink that dude. You're not going to live past know. 60 anyway. <laughs> <laughs> You're in a coal mine to begin with. <laughs> like and, and, and the, the the dirt under your nails covers a various wide range of ages where like you could be a child good, playing good outside. Kid. You could yeah. be a laborer, it doesn't matter. But dirt. If you got dirt under your fingernails and no health care, <laughs> fucking drink, it. drink that dude, baby. <laughs> How about this guy? I, I'm I'm in the teaching world. If if you were trying to I don't know why. I saw this after we were talking about that. Well, now I'm concerned that they're an advertiser. I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> what is this doing here? <laughs> well, that's, we're just going to bleep every time we say my That's view. a bit of a plot twist. <laughs> <laughs> um, if someone. I feel like I'm in. I'm like. I don't know. I feel like I'm sitting with. The person I'm about to kill. Whereas I'm just like, just play cool. Play cool. You don't know what's going to happen. The way you're moving that around, it looks like it's moving on its own. <laughs> Some equalizer shit. Uh, what, what, what Mountain Dew doesn't know? I'm going to take this out of the shot. Yeah, I think, we should. <laughs> I, I, I think we should go ahead and do that. Gonna, Let's make I'm it gonna uncomfortable. Put that out and we're going to uh, edit the we'll last leave, We'll leave this part in, <laughs> but. If asked, I will plead well, ignorance nonetheless. <laughs> like, I know we were sponsored by Mountain Dew. <laughs> when did that happen? <laughs> I, let, let's say, let's put it this way: Mountain Dew could be a sponsor of like OnlyFans, Only Only Stands, and like Lower in the Bar, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's about right. I I, uh, I will say in general though, like the soda in the workplace, I never. 
noticed how weird it was. The only time I ever heard somebody open one was when we had Harrison over the summer, and he just <laughs> cracked open a Diet Coke, and I was like, hey, was that a bottle of Diet yeah, Coke? I mean, that's, like, he's got to carry on the family tradition on that <laughs> <yeah>. one. <laughs> That's um, what, uh, I mean, listen, I, I, I can't talk too much shit because I'm white trash and I guzzle like Coke. But within within the white trash world of drinking soda, there's a hierarchy. And people who drink like Diet Coke and regular Coke uh, are are light years ahead of the do people. I, I, one, of those, one of the tweets said I'm a teacher. Light years is strong. No, bro. Come on. No, no, no. There are, I mean, like the amount of people who drink Diet Coke is. There's a lot of people. Like who drink we'd Diet still Coke. watch you guys fight in the Hunger Games. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> like, but like, like Diet Coke's like a big hangover drink. People love like a good fountain soda from McDonald's. Diet Coke. Like, there's there's a lot of people you're who just have describing that. Describing situations where you're like, hey, I have a piece of shit. Let's say. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the do is might as well go all in if I'm acting like a real scumbag here. <laughs> if I had a teacher trying to trying to teach me while drinking the dew <laughs> i wouldn't respect a single thing they i said. had a teacher mrs pillsbury used to just fuck mrs it. pillsbury just dude she was morbidly obese so mean and she used to just yeah. fucking had, she had a mini fridge in her class fuck yeah and she's just that's crazy. the only way i agree with it go <laughs> like like go all in yeah no 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 oh you thought she kept beverages in it that's silly she kept uh what's the piece of shit snack like uh, it's like yellow with white filling. Yellow with white filling. Twinkies. 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 Yeah. Oh. <laughs> she just had a f- uh, mini fridge stocked full of Twinkies in her in her off in her class. Well, the Twinkie is the food Mountain Dew. Yeah, 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 yeah. These are, <laughs> these these things go together. You know, drink a tw- eat a Twinkie, drink, wash it down with Mountain Dew. That's, <laughs> I, I I was flabbergasted, man. A lot of people being like, "Nah, man, this is it." But with the huge caveat. You're all animals outside the north. Yeah, yeah. All of you. Like See some you someone was like someone was like, Have you ever stepped foot in the south? And I was like, fucking no. <laughs> but like that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's, <laughs> that's who we're making we're making fun of you guys. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um Like look like yeah, my brother in law teaches high school English and doesn't do coffee or energy drinks, only the do. Like Yo, you, those kids, nobody respects you, dude. <laughs> nobody respects you. Dude, what about... Like, we'll pull a, pull a hey, mister, with fucking Mr. Football later. It's it, Billy Football. Barabi Football tweeted that. But, like, if your teacher drinks Mountain Dew in class, he'll buy you booze after class. Hell yeah. Like, yeah. Teach, we got a pro- party this weekend. My parents are out of town. You want to come? Like, Can I come? <laughs> uh, it's, uh, I'll somebody, do some skateboard tricks at it. Somebody... Uh, somebody t- tweeted me, uh, what, what are your thoughts on, on Red Bull in the morning? <laughs> It's the same fucking thoughts, guys. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess Red Bull's a little bit different. Oh, uh, I- no, if you're going to start to split hairs between Diet Coke and Mountain Dew, you are really splitting hairs between morning Red Bulls versus morning Mountain Dews. Well, I don't I do not do any of it. But the a morning uh, a Red Bull At least is an energy, energy drink. Yeah, yeah. That, like, that, yeah, there's a purpose behind yeah. it. Not just like, I want this sugary the, yellow drink. R- the Red Bull is designed to give you energy. It gives you wings. We... Well, Mountain Dew was designed to, to give you diabetes. Let everyone in the area know <laughs> you are trailer park trash. Yeah, like, like if things go south here, like like Eminem and Eight Mile drinks Mountain Dew, and like in, yeah, in, yeah. in his rap out of <laughs> I do drink Mountain Dew, like that. That you you, have, you almost have to do it like proudly, or not at all. Yeah, and even proudly. You should be on a mode of transportation when you do it so you can get out of town quickly when people start to boot you. <laughs> be it a bicycle with pegs, a skateboard, rollerblades. I think somebody actually tweeted tweeted at me saying, like, I only drink it in my vehicle. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I think that's yeah. what they said. You should be mobile when praising yeah, Mountain Dew. <laughs> yeah. I drink, oh, I drink Mountain Dew exclusively in my vehicle only. <laughs> yeah. That guy knows what's up. That checks out. Jonesy. Aaron Jones. <laughs> Aaron Jones knows how to hide his white trash. You know? I feel like it's a, like if you do have it once a year on a road trip. Like, yeah, like it goes it, it's a gas, gas station thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 could I not and even then, the last time I had it, I, I do not know. I, if you ask me what flavor Mountain Dew is, my answer would be yellow. I, I don't even know what flavor it is. I definitely had it as a kid, but like, I, I don't not even know. Re- if I not with regularity. Like, I, I tried it. I, I'm sure I had a sip. I don't think I ever like you know went to the vending machine and doop, doop, Chose like Mountain pu- Dew. yeah. I don't think I was at a party and it was like, do you want Sprite, Coke, or Mountain Dew? And I was like, Mountain Dew. Like, yeah. Never once. <laughs> never once. I did. Th- I did. Uh, no. But also, we didn't skateboard and shit. But I did think it was the coolest of the sodas. Really? Yeah. Actually, I like the X Games. 
I went to what, the you, what, what, you had so little self esteem you wouldn't even drink the cool drink. It, well, I just didn't. I did. I, uh, fizzy drinks don't really do it for me. I never really liked them. They make my nose tingle and stuff like that. <laughs> so I, I just never really did carbonated drinks. But did you drink juice as a kid? I had like the little juicy juice boxes sometimes. Yeah. Or, or what's or, funny or, is or like high C. Yeah, I think but, Mountain Dew is absolute trash. But you give me an Ecto Cooler, yeah. and I'm like, this is amazing. But even high C, the high C wasn't any regular. If we, it was like, if we, it was juicy juice, like, yeah, like the like the healthy juice box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, even though those are just like you know. Yeah, we like, looked basically. at it. It was like three percent juice. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> this isn't all made out of dust. <laughs> the fucking ashes of, <laughs> of fruit. <laughs> we set a bunch of fruit on fire, <laughs> and then we mixed up the ash, and what do you that's call juicy it? juice. What do you call it? Powder? You, no, when you like, burn someone. Yeah, I branding. Mean, no, like when you like burn someone dead. Cremated. Cremated. It's cre- cremated. <laughs> You're not burning someone oh, when they're already dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Got, it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Uh, so, I mean, I guess shout out to the do. Everybody does the do. Um, you guys are stronger. You, you are legion. You're stronger than I thought. It's can a lot more of you. Can I tell you uh, about my shirt? Sure. Very can't si- see it. What is very it? sick shirt. Oh, hell yeah. Right? Yep. Very cool. I got it from the Paul Walker Foundation on his anniversary of his death, or maybe his birthday recently. Can I tell you now the most insane thing that was said to me last week? It's like it's the most insulting thing that's ever been said to me at Barcelona Sports. We were talking movies, and Fasoli, the biggest Barstool fan in the history of the world, mm-hmm. truly, says to me, I didn't know you were a fan. I can't believe you've never seen Fast and Furious. And I said, what did you say to me? Man with a Viva tattoo on his leg? And he's like, you've never seen Fast and Furious. That's so crazy to me. Like, you love those movies, kind of movies. Why, why did you make that assumption? He's like, he's like, you said it. And I was like, I didn't say it. Because I saw Fast and Furious 1 in theaters. My dad drove home really fast. I remember that. Yeah, I watched all 20 of them in a row recently. Like- <laughs> he, said, he said when I was watching that, I said I'd never seen them before. It's just categorically it's untrue. Um... And I was like, dude, you live and breathe Barstool That stories. man knows every you single thing. There are like three things about me. <laughs> like, one of, arguably number one is Fast and Furious. And he was like, never heard of it, man. <laughs> that is so disrespectful. Like, I, like, like the last person on earth... I really care about their opinion is Fasoli, <laughs> but if he had, if he didn't know something about me, I'd be like, what, "Are you fucking kidding?" You know me? about everybody. He knows you, everything. You so little. He, 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 he reads. It was. Everything. It was. It was a nice. I was like, okay, all right. See where I stand. Good. Good, yeah, good reality good, check. Good to know. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You think you think you're big at this company? Fasoli doesn't even know what you're doing. Yeah. Fasoli knows like you know. Fasoli knows what like the the new Mean Girls podcast is about. <laughs> Fasoli knows you know everything about everybody. Doesn't know the biggest thing about you. All right, all right, John. Don't like it, play better. That's it, right? I like, gotta. You had a controversial take. Uh huh. You said that Paul Walker is the hunk of Fast and the Furious. I did say that. I was gonna bring it up on Barcelona Radio today because we have a gay man on the show today. But uh, I'm interested to talk about it. I I I just think. Are you talking looks wise? Because yeah, he's a better looking guy. Yeah. Okay. I think a hunky dude is like you're muscular, but you're not. I don't think you're huge. I'm I'm talking more like front man, like the front man of face, Fast and the Furious. The face of Fast and the Furious is Vin Diesel. Now it was Paul Walker, but like there's been so much more Vin. No, no. I, I Paul Walker is still, I'd say number two in, on the in the Fast franchise. Vin Diesel is number one now, but before but up to well, Fast, yeah, it's the, they're, they're one and two. Up, up to up to Fast Seven, it was Paul Walker series. He was and in then, seven, huh? Seven got, out of ten. Yeah. All right, that's fair. Yeah, I thought he was in like four. Mm-mm. And and he's still and he's, he's in seven. He's like in seven. like appears alive on. Okay. Yep. Yeah, yeah. The he All right, goes I'll give away you at the end of seven, but it's it's Paul Walker. You might know what you're talking about. With this <laughs> I bet though, I, like I bet if you if you ask the general public, like who's the star of Fast and the Furious. Yeah, because it's because it's only gone like crazy popular. Yeah, in the last, in the last three, three years. Yeah, with, with so the last like now you would say it's, like, it's Vince, but it like isn't it funny to be like that? That series really didn't get cooked until the eighth one. Yeah, <laughs> well, it, no, because <laughs> it uh, did. What, but it what's never, weird it is that's when like it, a, it got. That's when they started going downhill. Well, that's when it became downhill for the movies, but 
became a joke, a larger thing, thing, like a like. Was eight zombie cars? Yes. Yeah. That that was that was wild. Yeah. That, that was, was your car accident. Car accident. Car accident. Car accident. <laughs> seven. Seven is a lot, though. That's crazy. I I would have uh, never guessed that. So. And and Vin was only of the first seven. They were both in six. No, they were both in five. No, the Paul Walker was in six. Vin Diesel was in five. Yeah. Of the first seven. It's really a very interesting series that like it they lost them they brought them back yeah there's a death it became kind of a pop culture zeitgeist thing like it's it's a very interesting the fact yeah, it's dope yeah <laughs> the fact but but but, it, but it, you know there's there really is like it's very even if you are, yes the movie the, the content is silly fine whatever but everything else about that is like you know there's a lot of business behind like the stars that came and went the stars they brought in like all that shit it's like there was, I mean, like Ja Rule could have had yep. Tyrese's job, dude. Ja Rule, or Ludacris's job. Ja Rule made the call, like I'm a rapper and I don't want to be, I need to be like a hardcore rapper. Yeah, which is kind of funny because he was always like doing like the Ashanti songs and like pop songs, but I'm pretty sure he was his thing was like, no, 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 like I, people need to respect me in the rap game. Boy, that was a bad call, dude. Fast because I mean, Fifty like- Cent put him in his fucking grave, and then he didn't have rap at all, and he could have at least just been like, "Well, I'm still in these movies." And then Ludacris, Tyrese, guys like Fifty went on to act, and it was like so much of a bigger career for them. It's, it's Ja Rule just disappeared. The uh, it's been a very confident franchise since its its inception, where they're like, "Fine, go do your thing." Yes, we'll be here. We'll be fine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like like it, when it, Vin, it, Vin Diesel left, Vin Diesel's not in Too Fast Too Furious. He went to go do Triple X, right? And guess what? Triple X bombed. He, came guess who came back? Rolling on back. Because you know what? It really is. I don't think Triple X bombed, but it didn't do great. I was going to say, isn't that a. It got, there are three. Three I of think. them, right? Yeah. 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 And then, <laughs> That's a bomb for, for his, by his standards. <laughs> I know, maybe four. <laughs> maybe the, I, Vin did two. And I then think there was also Chronicles there's of Riddick one and all that coming shit. coming out yeah. now, right? Yeah, I think, I think Vin did two. They gave it to Ice Cube. And I think Vin Diesel's doing another one. Yeah. Any movie that can have the. The lead be played by Vin Diesel or Ice Cube is not a movie I want to see. <laughs> not a movie I want to nah, see. No, dude. It's like, it actually, it speaks to, I think, how we're still trying to figure it out. Our yeah. American Go James ahead. Bond. Search XXX movies. See what happens there. <laughs> I thought Vin Diesel was typed in, too. <laughs> the, uh... Like I think that was like he's kind of a spy. To the, I, I don't. I, I wish we had an American Bond, and I know. Well, I wish. was gonna say it's this. Yeah, Fast but, and the Furious is Americana. Yeah, you're probably honestly you're probably I, right. I'm not even joking because what I was gonna say before is the those, Bond's my favorite. I, Bond is. I'm obsessed with Bond. I, those guys, the creators. The, what's the dude who we interviewed? Neil uh, Horowitz. Neil Horowitz. Like those guys make movies about cars. Like, you know what I mean? Like, cars, muscle cars, racing, drag racing, cars. You're not, you're not bigger than cars. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, okay, you, you, you don't want to act in this? You don't want to act in this? <laughs> People like cars. <laughs> and they're coming for the fucking cars. And we can change you guys in and out to an extent. But it's cars. It's like dinosaurs and, and Jurassic Park. It's, you know what I mean? It's like, this is just shit. It's big and loud, and we like it. So <laughs> it you is, know, yeah. you you can you can, you th- you might think you're the fucking the 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 reason why this franchise is big. It's not. It's you know the crashes, the scenes, the explosions, all that shit. That was also the birth of not the birth, but that was like the final boss of like, yep, The Rock is just steroids for action franchises because he had done GI Joe, he'd done Jumanji, you just he, plug him in, do- <laughs> yeah, and it, it takes off, and then. Black Adam was like, well, not have the high end anymore. Well, yeah, you know what? It's like he he was never like the the star, right? Like the single solo man. Uh, it's always no. like Kevin Hart's with him. There's always like a big ensemble cast. He's a big important part of it. But like when you're the superhero. Skyscraper was dope. Skyscraper was so good. I saw Skyscraper like Sunday afternoon. Wait, is that, is that what that's called? Skyscraper? Skyscraper? Well, it's, it's... No, it's, San Andreas. Different movie. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, San Andreas, right. also awesome. He but, only has but the rocks in Skyscraper? skyscraper? Oh, yeah. And San Andreas. He only has one leg, yes. One leg. Uh, that's yeah. It. That's hilarious. The skyscraper is so sick, dude. Skyscraper is like... It's like uh, yeah, I don't know if I've seen Skyscraper. It's like it's Die Hard. <laughs> he's got to cr- He's got to get to the top of the building. Yeah, it's Die Hard in a uh, in China. 
Got awesome. it. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Yeah, this is the one with Daddario's in it? Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. That's San Andreas. Ah, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe I haven't seen it then. I, yo, I, 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 I don't know. We're at an interesting time in movies. I think, like, it took a long time for people to get it through the thick fucking skulls. But superhero movies have not been good since Infinity War. I didn't whatever. even know that They've all one been, was coming man. out. R.I.P. Tony Stark died today. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. Uh, what 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 what's coming out? Marvels, like in like two weeks. Oh yeah, they've been quiet about that one. Which one? That's like Brie fucking Larson. Brie Larson and uh, Brie, I mean she's she's the, she's the worst. Captain it, Marvel, she's the worst. Yeah. Is that? It's like uh, I, I I hate to be uh, early November. Right? It's October, right? I yeah. think this comes out early November. I hate to sound exactly what you know people think of us, but like that was a, a full blown like feminist movement, and people just don't fucking want that shit. That one, I that was Captain, fine. That, Captain Marvel I, I thought, stunk. I thought Captain Marvel was as good as any of the other non-main movies. That's what, the, which isn't very bad. good. They're all bad. But like people, I, people were just high off that that juice, drunk off that juice, and like they would see another one, and it would kind of scratch that itch, but they weren't ready to admit it. All of those movies, all of them stink. I I, I think I think it's kind of like hindsight kind of deal. Like in the moment, I liked all of these movies. I like nine. I, I'm not a Marvel guy. I thought Captain Marvel was really bad. The like, I thought uh, uh, Doctor Strange was bad. I didn't everybody see that thought one. Uh, Ant I Man was bad. Was that Ant Man? Everybody agreed Ant Man was. bad. I thought everyone liked Ant Man. I thought Ant Man was fine. The second one. Uh, I thought the second one was fine. The third one I didn't see, but the second one. Ah, uh, see, I didn't even. Uh, maybe yeah. that's. Uh, yeah. I, I thought there was only two, and then the Eternals stunk. I mean, they they're all bad. They're all bad. Yeah, the, all all those you're saying I haven't seen. I mean, I meant like in the heat, in the Marvel heat. Yeah. When like those movies are coming out, like in retrospect, yeah, they're not great. But like I, 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 I never regretted watching any of them. I was like, that yeah, was yeah, that was fine. I wasn't. Like, I, I think movies and rap music are very similar right now, where like it was it was kind of like uh, old man yelling out of the cloud opinion at first yeah and then it's like long enough that it's like no nah, man this shit sucks the this shit sucks like like i mean drake bombed with this last album for the most part like doesn't he have seven by top 10 songs yeah but like by drake standards it's like how's people, that a bomb it, it's it's always going to be a commercial success with drake but he just has so many fans but like rap the rap world was like this you just fucking mailed this shit in. Like, there's no. It's just the same exact fucking songs you've been doing forever. Yeah. So they say he's gonna take some time off. J Cole and and Kendrick Lamar already like take a lot of time in between projects. Like, if those guys are gone, someone said some old school rapper was like, they don't want to tell you this, but raps down like sixty percent over the. Yeah, I mean, like yeah. it's it's fucking the the genre is like. It's disappearing. Yeah, it's gone. Yeah. Do you what? What is it? I don't about, know what that is. I was talking about this with Trent because he's a big rap guy. What is it about rap that you think like when it comes out, almost people not want to hate it, but are excited to hate it? I don't like, think it's excited to hate it. I think it's uh, very high standards, more so than other music. But every other type of music I listen to, I'm just like, oh, that sounds good. Rap, I judge like an athlete. Why? I don't know. I think because rap is kind of like, uh, uh, like a like battling is such a part of it, and like so much of rap is being the best and rapping the best, and I feel like there's a little bit, uh, there's a little bit more of a tangible way to judge it. Like if you sing and I sing, it's like uh, you know, but like you could be like that was a clever rhyme, mm. M- more clever than that rhyme. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think so. There's, there's, there's a kind little, of. I mean, you can do it with any music. Yeah, but I, I, I think there's more. Like it, it relies more on wordplay, punchlines, metaphors, similes, all that shit. Um, I think I don't know. I don't. I, 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 I absolutely treat it differently than every other type of music. Like I, music, I saw I'm like, it. I don't care. I will like Ed Sheeran. I will like Justin Bieber. And blah blah blah. Like. I have my guys in rap that I'm like, I want to do well. And then when like other guys do well, I'm like, oh, fuck. I, 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 it's, it's like a sport to me. When, when uh, I think I was out to lunch, I was talking about Trent, the, I think the day after, whatever it's called, Drake the dogs. came out. Yeah. And uh, I was like, it almost feels like 
rap fans do what like like what our dads used to do and don't anymore where they're like it's this isn't rock and roll this isn't that this isn't mm-hmm. that and like i wonder if it's because the genre is so new that people like it's changing kind of for the first oh, yeah but, but it's yeah. not it's like it's it, not changing it, it, for the first it, time it's um it is i mean it's definitely just a different you know like the rap that his generation listens to is like i just don't even consider that the same music right but but what you listen to isn't what rap what rap was when it started yeah so i think i think the first i think what i listened to was the first time before me it was very like bop 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 Bop, 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 just like very like rhymey and like uh, like a nursery songy type shit. You uh-huh. know what I mean? Uh, Sugar Hill Gang, that shit. And then I think when I, my generation is where it started to get very like more complex and a lot more like every syllable's rhyming and a lot more like I said the punchlines, the wordplay, and all that. And then I think we we went away from that with this. This shit is they're always they're always like it's just about the vibe, man. It's just about the vibe. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, okay. Then to me, that's like what I think about like pop music. I'm like, mm. it's, it's got some good melody and a good hook. Okay, but I would never in a million years compare that to like a Jay Z verse or a Nas song or you know when these guys are at like their peak. And even when Drake does do it well, he he's right up there with everybody else. And then he just makes a bunch of songs, and I'm just like, those couldn't have taken you more than 15 minutes to make, dude. Yeah, because <laughs> I've seen but those are the I've best. Seen... One. Those are what they say are the best songs. Like, like the, the ones be- that just the like the best song doesn't take. Yeah, I, mean, I was reading. I think I might have said this already. Where I was reading uh, the article on GQ on and Ed Sheeran on Ed Sheeran in GQ the other day, and he writes three songs a day. He writes a song with breakfast, a song with lunch. That's song crazy. Day. That now that so rap is interesting in that regard too, because like you know the 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 the, the urban legend about Jay Z is he's never he doesn't write his rhymes down. Mm-hmm. I think you know he he does a lot in his head. I think it's I think people who believe he's never written anything down is crazy. Yeah, but there are accounts of him in the studio just listening to a beat and being like thinking and then being like okay let's do it and he does it in one take so he's like a savant like that i don't think it's necessarily time it's like motivation i think you can only really rap about like rap itself being the best at rapping fucking the most chicks having the most money all that shit for a certain amount of time eventually yeah. it's like you know a lot of these guys it was like you were either dealing drugs or in gangs or whatever and then they like transitioned out of that, but they had like this whole life of crime to kind of draw upon. And then then they made it and they made like pop like party records. And then they would battle and they had battle records. And then it was just like, then what? You know? Mm. That's why Jay Z's album when he did four forty four is kind of regarded as like one of the only rap albums that was made by like a guy later in life who like was rapping about his family and and, you know, just culture and all that shit. In that regard, it is like there's there's so few rappers who are old, and and still really like doing it at a high level. Nas is really, I think Nas is aging amazingly. He has kind of come back. He has he's dropped maybe like six albums, three three most recent albums with this with one producer, Hit Boy, and like it's real rap and it's good. It's not charting and it's not huge, but everybody else is either we're basically retired or it's like this young shit that is just like, I mean like they're they're you know. Guys are canceling tours. Yeah, there's Travis Scott tickets for five bucks on on the secondary market, and they're like they're nosebleeds. But like that, you know, at the peak of your rap career in you know the '90s, 2000s, 2010s, you ain't getting tickets for five dollars anywhere, yeah. and, no, and no one's canceling anything. It's you know, at some point it went from like I, I was like I'm just yeah I'm a hater I'm old and like I'm not young anymore and I don't know this shit. To like, no, 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 not even young people are, are really fucking with this anymore. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think they, they might say they are, but it's like, you don't. Well, Pavs, you had that story about when you went to was it Backseat Lovers yeah. and everyone left after the TikTok song. Oh, yeah, that was crazy. So I'm a big Backseat Lovers fan, and they played across the street a couple months ago. And Wait, was... they played at MSG? No, 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 not, not at MSG. At uh, one of MSG's smaller theaters. Oh, the Hulu, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's still huge. Yeah, yeah. big, yeah. And, um, and then I, get, I think it's going to be like hardcore like fans, like uh, – and then I get there and I'm like, I can realize that no one here even knows this band. Like right away, like I'm listening to the first like five songs, no one's singing along. I'm like, this. I brought people, they didn't even know. Like it was like, and it was sold out. And then they played the TikTok song, everyone left. 
And that's would, crazy. Like that, uh, and that. So that's maybe more every single more music than just rap. Phone, yeah. But it's like, yeah. yeah, they just recorded and left. It was like crazy. They just recorded on their phone. Yeah. And that. What TikTok did that to, to music so is much, actually dude. insane. Because even from the Drake album, like I think there's five good songs on there that I'm like, those are great, great Drake songs. But the song with the the guy Yeet, who's like the TikTok guy. It's just number one. It beat the J. Cole song. It beat all the good stuff. It's crazy. That, I mean, it's crazy. One. Like, it's, the J. Cole song is, like, fucking awesome, yeah. and his TikTok song is bigger than that, yeah. which I actually think that's cool that Drake does that. Like, I think hip-hop is very gatekeepy, and, like, you know, like, like there is an old and young, and usually it's actually the young, like, hating on the old, and they, they just don't ever really mesh, you yeah. know? Now, Drake is not old by any means, but he has, you know, been around for a long time, and the fact that he puts guys on like that I think is pretty cool. Mm-hmm. But it's so like like the best way to I think to describe it is Joe Budden and and it, Drake went off on Joe Budden the other day because I think Joe Budden like touched a nerve, and Joe Budden is very controversial and he was a rapper now a podcaster and so Drake can very easily be like you're you're fucking you're done you don't even do this anymore mm-hmm. you know, but Joe was just like yeah but you'll grow up one day. And it, I think it drove Drake fucking insane. Because his first comments were like, you're just making music for, like, kids. And and that's okay. Which is a very, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, he did it in a way that's like, that's fine. You can just still make, you know, songs about, like, you know, cheating on girls and, like, fucking them and, like, not giving a shit about them. Like, I don't know, whatever. One day you'll grow up and, like, maybe make a song of substance. <laughs> and then, you know, he knows exactly what he's doing. And then Drake releases a fucking paragraph on Instagram. Which some of the things were true and and like hurtful and like oh shit, but it's also like there's a reason why you wrote that. Yeah, yeah. And I think I think you know that that's right. I think you know that this album, yeah, it, it, like it's he's, he just hit. Uh, he's tied with Michael Jackson now for most number one records, seven in the top, whatever. All you know, all that shit, most streams, whatever. It's there's just no. And even like the song, like the but it, it, first it, person shooters, like everyone's like J Cole is the best part of that song. Like even even the stuff that w- was good is like sometimes it's not him. And then but then he does have songs where it's like do that, like fucking do that, man. That was awesome. And it's only like three or four times an album. And there's but I know. I don't think I I I I think, again as a non rap fan I have no problem with what he does. Like I think everyone in every industry does that. Yeah. Where, well, like, I, I, I I do think rap is a little different where it's like. If you want to be, when people start throwing your name around as like the greatest of all time, there are just different rules, I think. And that's probably not fair. But, and like he doesn't have to play by them either. He can be like, I want to make a dance record. I want to make an Afrobeats record. I want to make an R&B album. I don't want to make a, just a rap album because that'll only satisfy like one fourth of my fans. Yeah. Totally get that. But also in this, in this arena, in this, in this genre, like you will then get judged differently. Yeah, I, I but like, I'd be like I was reading about Chris Evans where he's like I don't know like I I liked being Captain America but I liked acting in serious movies too. Yeah, where it's like yeah I, I'm just gonna I do the one that gets me but, a lot of money and I do the one that shows I'm a good actor too. But that's what I I think that's the difference is like Drake is just doing Captain America. But you just said he has five well, songs. He, yeah, where, he, yeah, 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 yeah. So he, he's doing uh, so those are his other. Yes, ones. he does. It's just it's like individual songs here and there. Like all he this this album had 23 songs on it. There's just no need for that. Yeah. Do a fucking twelve album twelve song album and just put out and I, I don't even I don't even like necessarily he doesn't have to do anything. He's right. fucking whatever. But if you it's it's it would be like if somebody was talking shit about my career and like I knew I could do what they're saying, I would just fucking do it. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. I'd just be like, fucking here you go. Cause I if you add up over the last but couple of years. But then you're doing your career for them. Yeah, I mean, it, I liken it to winning a championship in basketball. It's like you don't want to have like the Patrick Ewing, Charles Barkley career. It's still yeah. awesome, but you want to like get that fucking right, checked right. off, you know. And he, over the last couple years, which most people take a couple years, especially later in their career, to put out an album, he's put out like probably close to ten like really good songs. That if he just put that in an album, it'd be done. Yeah, like, here's your classic. Here's your Drake classic. Like. Fucking 10, 12 songs, no skips, great features, great hooks, straight rap, done. And then I'd be like, now what? You know? Uh-huh. It just feels like we, they, people have been asking for that for a while. And I, everyone kept being like, "That's this is the one, this is the one, this is the one. And it never really happened. And I think you should just fucking do it because he can. It's, it, it would be one thing if it's like, yo, the dirty little secret is he, he can't. He can't. Yeah, yeah. It's just... He won't. Yeah, but he's I also mean, like, because, you know, I, uh, this is dumb shit that, you know, probably mostly male 
older fans think, and he's got young women, and he's got people overseas, and da, 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 da. he's got the biggest fan base probably in the world, maybe other than like Taylor Swift. Bad Bunny. Bad Bunny. But even like, I feel like Drake has like overseas more than Bad Bunny has in America. Bad Bad Bunny is the Bad Bunny's a weird one. Like I I, I like to think I'm I'm pretty tapped in at least uh, somewhat. Can you sing a song? Can you name a song? Nope. Yeah, I'm sure you could play a song. I go, oh, I've heard yeah, that. Yeah. But no, I cannot. It's I very similar to like, anything. like I know Ronaldo and Messi and those guys, but every now and then there's a soccer player name that I'm like, oh, fuck it, who? Yeah. And that guy's making like $400 million a year? <laughs> what? That's Bad Bunny for me. It, 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 there is something weird about Bad Bunny that like, it doesn't cross over. Does he, does he just, does he make English songs? Or is it all in Spanish? I think, I mean, he definitely speaks English. Yeah. He, he dates a Jenner and I think he's, Coming up in the new movie, so he's like—I mean, he's definitely a that, that more might, than proficient English speaker. That might be weird. Just the old, like that's the, truly my oldest. Well, the there was a tweet yesterday that was so fucking funny, um, where uh, what was it about? The uh, oh. Millie Bobby Brown did not consider herself a feminist until her psychic told her she was. Thankfully, a commune with the spiritual realm brought her to the banks of girl bossery, and now she is no. making a movie about a, dra- a girl in a dragon pit. And someone what? replied. Someone replied to it. I'm. Uh, this, is, this is a screenshot of a tweet. Um, this tweet says, "I'm 50." All celebrity news looks like this. To yeah. me. <laughs> Curtains for Zusha, K Smog and Bat Boy caught flipping a grunt. <laughs> do, like, do you think there is a chance that, you know, it, it, in the grand scheme of things, in the history of everything, we 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 you know when we say like we were, we were at the beginning of something like the you know the advent of this or that we were truly like at the fucking beginning of the internet uh-huh. like the very first fucking time and i think it probably takes you know a couple decades for society to really like start to react to it cuz it, it it just feels like we can't, we can't keep going at this pace. <laughs> like, I, it's just there's just it's just things are getting too stupid. I, 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 it's like because of algorithms, and because of we just let people decide. It's like people are stupid. Yeah. So, but I, I also think like that. Yeah, it sucks. Like the I, I thought uh, Calvin Harris had such a cool answer when I asked him. Not Calvin Harris. I'm sorry, Jesus Diplo. Um, when I asked him about that, where I was like, is he talking about? I forget what I, I forget what I was asking about. But I was talking about something, mm-hmm. and oh, he, he talked about like writing twenty songs in a night. But the his hit was whatever it was, yeah, and yeah, all that yeah. stuff. And he was like, "Yeah, man, that's just the way it is. Like you know, you let the market decide." And yeah. like, I, I, I obviously to an exceptionally lesser extent, like all of my favorite out of order sketches have not been, been your pop- favorite. Have not yeah. been the most popular sketch by at all. But that then like but, those are the ones I thought were the best, and like maybe worked the hardest on or whatever. And like those ones are almost exclusively the dumb the ones you do, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. like they're the ones I think are the best. But that I think that's what like works is like that's why that show works is like either by design or by accident you have a good blend, you know? Yeah. Like you have a weird brain that satisfies you creatively, and then you also know how to like give the people, you know, the 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 Babcock skit or the whatever skit, you know? I think the Babcock. I, I think this one, the most recent one. I think that one. Was the first one where I was like, "This, this one's is good. great," and everyone's like, and "This is great." Yeah. The yeah. Uh, I I I think I, we've talked about this before, but, that, but, but that's a, to get it back away from me. The like I think that's just the way it's been forever. But where, I don't think it has been. I think we talked about this before, where there was a time where it was like there was a couple movie studio execs, a couple big acts in music, a couple big acts in movies, whatever, and like they decided what movies were made, and you yeah. just you just had to watch those. That was it, you know. And now there's just so much access that it's like, it's not even access. It's the decisions are being made by numbers rather than people. And the people, and the I, people I think used to be either really into it, or eccentric, creative, weird, a little different, and they were like, "We're gonna make this movie," and it was one of only like a handful that you could watch, or there's only a couple channels, and people learned to like, you know, just this thing, and now it's like, we can. It's just it's just satisfying. We are able to satisfy everybody's most basic needs and wants, like 
Yeah. Just the easiest well, humor, the easiest drama, the dumbest whatever. And so people are just like, I'll just do that, you know, rather than being like this this guy who was a great producer, a great writer, a great this, a great that. You like trusted in it a little bit. And that was probably a little bit smoke and mirrors. Those people didn't have the key to everything, but they had probably, you know, a little more knowledge or a little more creativity or a little more talent than what's going on now. But also, like I, like I remember the, the Melissa McCarthy saying that, like, they used to hate suits. And she's like, I'd kill to argue with a suit now. Because when you were pitching to suits, someone in the room could go, I get this. Yes. I see this. Numbers don't. Let's make this fucking movie. Yeah. You can't, you can't make that yeah. argument. You can't have someone believe in you. If it's just numbers, right? Yeah, and just being like, I think the stakes. I also, I don't. I keep saying this on on the show over and over again, though. But I, I, like algorithms can absolutely be manipulated and or or just fed in a certain way, and then it's like, look at the numbers. It's like, I don't fucking know where that came from. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's like certain things are kind of undeniable, and they they pop, and they're like, yes, that people generally agree that person is funny, talented, can sing, whatever. But a lot of this is just like, the fuck do you know about this algorithm? But I also think the stakes are so much lower. Yeah. Because you're not... There's no barrier of entry. There's no... Like, I think everything is... But I, you're not trying to be... entered. Like, even when you put on something, 90% of people aren't watching it anyway. So they walk away and go, that was fine. Yeah, you're on your phone or whatever. Like, like, it, it, yeah. like people don't consume yeah. the but way that, they so used to. This is like all... I'm saying all of this, I think we're probably just reaching the first, like... Uh, reaction in a way, you know what I mean? Like, like wholesale, like societal reaction to all this, where it's like, holy shit, shit has changed. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, it used to be like, oh, this is good. Like, oh, you don't need the movie studio anymore. That's cool. Like, I was reading about how Taylor Swift just cut out Hollywood for this movie and like, yeah. totally fucked them. Like, that's cool. But also, some of those those things that are kind of probably corporate evil, also in a weird way, probably kept things a little more. Uh, a little bit of a higher standard or just not as just much garbage right you know and I, I mean we you know in a way in a way like we're garbage i think like we're just kind of a an example of like we just kind of just do this shit and people like it and so we have a career out of it uh -huh. you know so i'm being a little hypocritical in that but i don't know maybe you know that first wave of like podcasting is kind of like a st step down where it's just natural and you don't have to be like super talented so like i think that's cool you go like two levels below that and it's like jesus christ this yeah. shit sucks man. <laughs> These, all this shit sucks now so i don't know where you draw the line i don't know how you how you stop it if you can stop it i just think everything kind of goes in waves but i think it takes there's like short-term waves and long-term waves you know yeah where it's like I think eventually kids will be like, I don't, I don't get my fucking phone, but that might be like two more generations. It might take a hundred years, you know, but eventually it'll be like, that sucks. Like you're on your phone all the time. I, I think, and this is, you know, I bought a red car, so I'm seeing more red cars, but like in actively trying to be off my phone, which I'm, it's, it's actually, it's not active anymore. I'm not on my phone a lot anymore. Um, I see it. Maybe it's because the people I'm hanging out with or like are also. You know, hang out with more people who are on their phones less or whatever. But, like, I see it a lot less now. A and I also notice it being less fun. Like When you're on your phone, you're on your phone. Like, I could be on my phone for 10 minutes. I'm like, this is so fucking boring. Mm -hmm. Whereas, like, mm -hmm. I used to spend all the time on it. And I know there's, like, little variations of it in, like, I think TikTok where, like, high school. I, I heard about a TikTok where high schoolers had flip phones or something like that. And I don't know if that – I didn't even see yeah, it. Yeah, I, I, I think, I think you're, we're probably at the point where, like, uh, cutting edge – you know, like mavens or whatever they call it, are like starting to do that shit again. But the general public is still very much on it, and eventually, I think you know. I just think will. that the that kids see what their parents do and do the opposite. inherently think it's lame. Yeah, and if people our age are all on their phones, kids are gonna see it and look at it like the way I looked at my dad reading the paper. I was like, that's fucking. Dumb, yeah, I dude. I don't know though. There's something about phones that like. My, I, I, my kids just, are my kids want a phone. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think like when you get to maybe your teenage years or something like that. But the the first wave is like there's videos on there. There's yeah, games and on to, there, be, to keep the newspaper you know, thing. Like I was intrigued as a child. Yeah. I was like, why well, my dad always read the paper? Like, he yeah. get like ten papers a day. Yeah. And I was like, why is he always reading the paper? Yeah. And then as I got older, I was like, hey, dude, stop reading the fucking paper. <laughs> like, right. Right. And like I think. I don't know. That, I mean, obviously, I'm completely guessing and know nothing. But I just think that's human nature, that I, you'll see I, what your parents do and be like, that's dumb. I think w this this first wave, there was enough, like, good talent 
utilizing these things. And now those things are lessening the talent. That's a difference. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like a guy like Drake, like, I don't, maybe Drake's not a good example. Like somebody who like was and is talented and then, you know, starts to be like more prolific and just puts everything out and it's oversaturation. But it's like, but when that guy started, he was like, people liked him, you mm-hmm. know? And now it's like, why did anybody ever like this person? Yeah, yeah. They just danced or they just <laughs> they just mouthed the words to a song. Like, what the fuck? That, I think, is the difference where it's like there at least still used to be talent. And, I hey, I'll use the internet. I'll use my phone. I'll use social media. And now it's like I just am that shit. And that, I think, eventually people will, will like, suss that out a little. Eventually people are going to stop throwing away money. Mm. I, I think. I don't know. Cause, but, like, Drake's a good example of, like, I don't fucking care if these songs are good or not. <laughs> Everything goes to number one, you know. If if the movies are bad, but it get makes money, you know. But eventually, if if people are canceling tour dates, if movies start to flop, if TV shows don't get renewed, like all that shit starts to happen. I think eventually they stop being like, let's give the money to the TikToker and let's give the money to the really talented comedian. Yeah, yeah. But I think we're still probably a little little bit further away on that. So, but it, it is interesting to live through it because it's like, I mean. You know, if you're talking about hundreds and thousands of years of over time, like we're still talking about the last fifty and really <laughs> like the last thirty, 30 really. Yeah. You know, that shit is crazy. So, um, we'll see. At least we got to get a little bit of money off of it. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> uh, should we rip some voicemails? Yeah, yep. let's do it. Last week on the internet, people were debating uh, what's a good first date spot. There was a girl in a car who was refused to get out to go to the restaurant because she didn't like the place that the guy chose, and everyone started debating what is the best date night uh, option. I- I'm going to throw this out there. Go to the bowling lanes. Bowling is a great time where everybody kind of lets their guard down and acts like a little bit goofy. You have some fun. You have a little bit of competition. Nobody looks cool or good doing it, so everyone can just laugh and have a good time. And a place like Bolero has got you covered with the best unlimited bowling plans out there. They have night strike and after party on uh, Mondays and Fridays. They have... uh, all sorts of packages. They have uh, unlimited bowling plus shoes Monday through Thursday. Uh, it's endless fun at Bolero with unlimited bowling specials all week long. So it's the perfect way to roll of fun and excitement into the night, whether you're doing it with your friends, whether you're doing it on a date, bring your family. Uh, you can bowl all night long and enjoy yourself. It's the number one place to bowl, party, eat, and save. And now you can enjoy unlimited bowling and food, be- be- food and beverage specials all week long. Never stops on the lane, so don't miss out. Go to uh, Bolero.com. And find a location near you. That's bolero.com. What's up, guys? Uh, first time, long time for myself, I guess you could say. Uh, I have called you guys before and you've used my voicemail, but I was absolutely blackout fucking drunk when I called. <laughs> Didn't even remember doing it until like a week later. I'm on my way home from work and all of a sudden uh, my voice is coming through my speakers as I'm listening to your show and I was so fucking confused. So I guess in my own mind, first time. Um, anyways, guys, just have a quick hypothetical for you. So... Heard this yesterday, immediately thought you guys had to call the show. Um, it, would you take generational wealth? You know, you quadruple your salary as of tomorrow. If your only consequence was every night when you went to bed until the day you retire, so 20 to 30 years from now, every single night when you go to bed, you have the worst nightmares imaginable. I mean, wake up out of a dead sleep in a sweat type nightmares. Would you do that? Hell no. Um, I don't know which way I'd go. I just can't imagine being afraid to go to bed every night, but the money sounds pretty good. Bro. Uh, quick sidebar too, guys. I'm here in Pittsburgh, so I'll be at the show on Friday. Really looking forward to it. Uh, I was listening to your most recent episode where Kevin was talking about relationships and how people never know when to leave. Well, my girlfriend of five years just recently left me, um, so she knew when she wanted to fucking leave. <laughs> and get out of here. So, do I go to the show solo, Dolo? We already have. To oh hell for, yeah! Or do I take a buddy from work that you know I'm barely friends with? No, 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 and, no. Uh, so that way I'm not sitting there looking like an asshole. No, come Either solo, way, guys. Appreciate it. Looking forward to Friday. Viva. Come solo. You'll be our personal guest. <laughs> we'll make sure you have a good time. Fuck that chick. Um, I'm telling you, as someone who recently got money but is having trouble at night, it is not worth it. Mm-hmm. I like nightmares. I don't think you know what nightmares are if you like them. I think because uh, I, 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 I just learned what nightmares really are. Like I, I've had like bad dreams, and then recently I had nightmares where it's like I was fucking, you know, I woke up like. 
If you if you're having a dream where you're where you can't breathe, does that mean you're not breathing in real life? I don't know. I feel like that means I almost like died in my sleep. <laughs> <laughs> it's like like gasping for air constantly, and I feel like that means like kind of like when you have to pee, like if you have a dream about peeing the bed, you pee the bed, sort of thing. You know what I mean? Uh, yes. Anyway, I think I'm dying in my sleep, and I think that these <laughs> these new nightmares are kind of like more on the side of night terrors, and that shit is fucking ridiculous. I I I don't get dreams that much obviously so like i always remember the nightmares when i have them and it's nice to have something just because you can feel (laughs) (laughs) and also i have a hard time getting up like i have a hard time waking up in the morning if i have a nightmare no i don't i'm up oh okay okay (laughs) okay I, i do get that i i just like i used to always love going to bed at night and now i do not that sucks that's been a pretty recent thing for you. Yeah, yeah. It's it's like some Nightmare on Elm Street shit, Freddy Krueger shit. Like that's why that movie's so good is because nobody can escape sleep. You know? Yeah. <laughs> and every night I'm like, fucking, here we go again, man. <laughs> here we fucking go so again. <laughs> it sucks so bad. It's, it is brutal. And like, and like my money's just you know just like sitting there now. It's like I don't know. I, 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 I maybe I need to do more shit with my money. I don't know. I guess the uh, what do you call it? Like, I, I guess, gun to my head, I'd say no, but that's because I just don't really know what it's like. Also, generational wealth is different than four times your salary. Four yeah. times your salary is like you're making a lot of money. Generational wealth is like... Your grandkids are also... You like, can't blow it. Like, right. Yeah. Like, when you when your kids have kids, you go, I got college. Good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's... So, those are two different things. Um, Generational, I might consider it, like, uh, you know, big, big raise. I don't think so. Yeah. The... Uh, the... Like, I, I, I didn't realize it until, probably until I moved into my current apartment. And it was, like, the first time I've, and even this, it's not a home by any stretch of the imagination. But I'm not, I don't dread going home. I'm not, like, you fuck. Don't. Yeah. Like. And you used to? Okay. Yeah. Like, all my other, because I, I never had, like, a, home. Yeah, yeah. a nice apartment. Right. right. And, right. like, again, this one's, my, wall my apartment's not nice, but, yeah. like, it, but it's, it's, it's yours. mine. It's yours, yeah, yeah. And um, I never had that. And, like, there's a humongous difference in just being, like, I'm home and I'm in my own space now. Yeah. And that is what bed is. Yeah. And that is what your sleep is. And if you don't have that, that's probably – again, I, I'm I'm kind of jokingly saying, yes, I take it because I don't really know what the evil is. Um, but I guess if that's the case, if you're, like, in bed being, like, fuck, here we go, I would not take that. <laughs> yeah, it sucks, dude. And it's, like, there's just I, – I, there's certain things in my life that – I have to pay rent today. Fuck. <laughs> 17. Don't let me leave this room right now without writing my check. <laughs> Fucking just do it right now. Okay. I, I I um I feel like anxiety is relatively new in my life. One of those things that again that I like thought I knew what anxiety was where it's just like, "Oh, you get nervous sometimes." It's like, "No, no, 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 no. Anxiety is like when I now I know what anxiety is, and that fucking sucks so much dick, dude." And I can't tell whether that is just something that happens in life or if i mean I, I think i have some pretty unique circumstances in my life right now that are like that's what's causing it but those also are not going away anytime soon so i'm like this is just life now and that you know what yo you know what did you read that article or any of the, the tweets about um shams 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 uh i don't know how to say his name shams karanya the, the NBA insider yeah um i saw he like makes like 600 grand a year in espn but makes money on it other places too, um, bro. I don't care if that guy makes six. The the I don't care if he makes six hundred million dollars a year. I would not trade lives with that guy ever. Why, dude? I'm gonna read this to you. You're gonna puke. You of all people, you're gonna fucking hate this man. It is, I mean, just the worst life imaginable. If you ask me. Uh, when I asked people who work in the NBA what it's like to have Charania chase them for a scoop, especially earlier in his career, they described it as an experience somewhere between irritating and a pain in the ass. He was calling all the time, like nonstop, to get any little morsel of information, Jerry Colangelo said. It was like being doxxed, except that all the calls were coming from a single person. He'll text you 20 times in an hour to a point where he wears guys down and you just want him to fucking leave you alone. Uh, a current executive told him he gets a happy Father's Day text. Um... He a third guy said that he once wished him happy Labor Day. Like he he just has any any angle to text somebody. He says he sends five hundred text messages a day. He uh, there was a couple other uh, other like stats from it. Let me find it. Um, uh, 
He sends 500 emails or texts a day, puts in 18 hour days. Uh, doesn't he used to play pickup basketball? He once miss, missed a significant coaching update, so he just stopped playing basketball. So he just like <laughs> doesn't do the stuff he loves anymore. And he just texts people 500 times a day, being like, "Hey man, what's up? What are you doing? What are you doing? What's going on? What's going on?" I not for all the money in the world. Not for all the money. I swear <laughs> to God, 600 million dollars. If I was known as the guy that the, that Jerry Colangelo was like, I just want you to fucking go away to everybody. In the league of like the sport that you presumably love, like you like basketball, so that's why you got into it, and everybody now hates you. Also, you can tweet that like so and so got four years, two hundred million dollars. Who fucking cares? Yeah, like that is I, I can't actually believe that. I can I can understand in the beginning why Woj and Schefter and those guys were like important, but now it's like, I don't give a fuck who says this. <laughs> yeah. Like you used to kind of follow this guy because you would get it first. And now it's like I get it over here 13 seconds before I get it over here. Yeah. Who the fuck gives a shit about that? That I is would never in my life would I ever do that. It's a that's a that's a nightmare. That's I mean I get nervous texting people <laughs> like once. Anything at yeah. all, let alone happy labor day. Happy labor day. So, you know, have you made a decision about your life? You want to tell me a total stranger on the internet? <laughs> <laughs> Why does anybody I guess I guess people just say like, "Fine, I'm going to the Bucks." Fucking tweet yeah. it out. Goodbye. You know? <laughs> Who cares? That is an ugly life, dude. That, that's and you know that, like, you know he would, like, backstab a friend to get a tweet off. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah. Like he would, he would step on someone's fucking neck if it meant that he could get a scoop to put on Twitter, which is that's a sad life. <laughs> no, I, I'm not even like knocking that guy personally because what I'm just saying, like, the people who do that, that's crazy. You, you're wired different. Yeah, for like, sure. Maybe you love it, so good for you. But holy shit, that sounds awful. Yeah, if I was a different person, sure, I'd do that, but I'm not. I'm and not. I'm okay. Yeah. And I think most people are probably like me, not like that. So it's like built different. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Fucking psychopath. All right, go ahead. That's familiar. Uh, what's going on? KFC Radio Maybe Gang. Uh, you know, Jackie Pabs, fights, KFC, obviously. Um, so I got a story that leads into a question again. Um, so kind of last it would have been Thursday of this week before the long weekend kind of started. I had a popsicles moment, uh, yeah. which if you don't remember, uh, the really? one-off segment that you guys did of Feidelberg missing obvious signs, I, I had a, a popsicle uh, moment. I thought you just eating popsicles. I was like, oh, yeah. uh, essentially the, the short version of events was, uh, I was walking out of my apartment and this good looking gal who lives in my apartment building, um, was walking in to use the steps right by my apartment and recognized me from the voicemail that I had done about my dead dog. And she said, oh my God, you were on KFC uh, a couple like episodes ago. And I was like, you watch KFC radio? Uh, and she was like, yeah, I watch it at work uh, when nothing's going on. I just watch it in the background. And I was just like, oh, okay, cool. Like." thinking nothing of it. And my main focus was I had like my bag in my hand and I was ready to go do my three hour schlep home from my apartment to like my home home. And all I'm thinking about is just like traffic, traffic, traffic. Cause like the DC area is just horrible with traffic. And I try to get out of my apartment as soon as I can, whenever I'm going home for the weekend, especially a long weekend. So I basically was just completely oblivious and I'm thinking back on the conversation now and this girl was just like, oh yeah, you know, I'm, I'm sorry about your dog, but you know, like I have a dog and maybe, uh, maybe you can go on a walk with me sometime and we can walk the dog together. Oh, man. And I was just like, yeah, okay, sounds good. And <laughs> I just completely like was oblivious or socially blind as I put it in my last voicemail. Um, and I just wanted to see like, my question is, in a perfect world, if you could have like an app or like, I don't know, like basically a subscription service where you could pay on a month to month basis to basically tell you when you're missing signs or when you're being oblivious or when you're doing <laughs> that would be great socially and be like, yo, dummy, like she's trying to hit on you or yo, dummy, you know, like this is what you should be doing. Would you pay for it on the month to month? Like, w would you do that? Would that be something you're willing to buy? It's like the easy button, but like for for you know like yeah eh, you're missing it like go get her. I I think uh, first of all, this this is great because she'll either see this th this work this guy's golden yeah because she'll first of all that probably worked she probably was like 
this guy just big time the shit out of me. <laughs> this guy is a he's a you know he's a big dog <laughs> or she'll see this you're good you're fine you you will have your second chance with this girl um i think like a little spidey sense like a little like a little zap in your fucking in your pocket like you're fucking this up would be great i disagree really i wouldn't take it if it was free <laughs> really uh, yeah you don't want you you don't even want to course correct you just want to go i i think that's the fun of it I think I think I'm gonna miss 99 percent of your signs. That's just a fact. I'm gonna miss. <laughs> Wait, nine. are you talking about like specifically when it comes to like male female courting, or are you just like missing signs in life? Like I think all of it, business, all that shit. I think all of it. I think probably I'd hate it even more if it was business. I I think courting. I'm like, there is some fun to that. I like I I. It, it is also like, I wish I wasn't this way, but it's like it, I just genuinely am. Like, if I know you like me, I turn me off. <laughs> like it is. Because then I feel like bro. I feel like I'm the prey and I feel pursued and I don't like that. It is, you are impossible. <laughs> you really the, are. Um, like I, yeah, I've had like we talked about it before. Like girls, like oh no, I just like that because you like it. I'm like mm. Ugh. that, but that's different than so liking now you. you. Tricked me. Um, yeah, liking things that someone else likes just because they like it is stupid. But the but but then there's also there's a romanticism to liking what your partner likes yeah. to feel closer to them all that stuff. But the if it was if I had just someone being like, dude, or or or, or I think the app was lying to me, I'd be like fucking, you're an idiot. Yeah, you don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, because I've had yeah. friends be like, dude, she's like she's into you. I'm like you're dumb. Yeah. But the I, I I don't know. I I like. I I think it could be cool to just. It would have to be like so. This is like Minority Report shit. It would have to be like spot on. And give you enough time. If if it's just gonna let me know, like in the moment, like as that girl's walking away, you blew it. Like I don't need that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need something that somehow can see the future, and just gives you. Doesn't even give you what to say or do. Almost just, I'll call the app Costanza, and it's just like do the opposite of what you're about to do. Yeah. <laughs> like like bzz, bzz, in your pocket, and it's like whatever you were about to say, do the the polar opposite of that, and I'd be like, okay, sounds good. That I I could fuck with that. That's like. Uh... Because if if you break it down, that app's almost like the Black Mirror episode of uh, Hang the DJ, where they have like the app that tells them when to break up, yes. and they have to, yeah, it's yeah, not yeah, a match. Yeah, and you're yeah. like, it's like this is a match. I was like, I don't want that. Not match. anymore. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It would have been, but now you told me that. <laughs> it's a great episode. It's a, it's a great probably one. my favorite Black Mirror episode. Yeah, that's a great episode of television. Um, but yeah, it does get a little a little Black Mirror-y, Twilight Zoney, but because it's like. Is does that app take into account that you're getting told? You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, would, it would have to be literal magic in order for that to work. You know? Do you have that, Jackie? Where do you, are you ever like hitting on a guy and you're like, how is he not picking up on this? Um, or flirting with a guy or I, I, I'm, I'm like you, where I, I like won't even like I, I'm the opposite. But like, I won't be my way of flirting is like making eye contact with them so it's like obviously they're not gonna pick up on it i guess the i think i think when like like i was thinking about that girl where she's probably like how did that guy i mean i come for a dog S- walk saying, my dog yeah is, is, that's is, a, if you miss that that's crazy but at the same time women spend most of their day being like guys are so dumb and then we do something dumb they're like how are they doing it. this yeah like, yeah it's obvious and, and that that is very heavy-handed a lot of times it's like he didn't notice that I like walked by him, like on the way to the bathroom. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> what the fuck, like, yeah, that that uh, I I feel like it's mostly a guy to girl thing, but I'm sure there are girls. Girls usually I, pick I'm up sure on it right away and are like, not interested. that's enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think when it is reversed though, it's probably like mind blowing when when a girl is like throwing it out there and some dudes like. I got it. There's a lot of red lights. I got to go. Yeah. And she's like, what? Do you the understand fuck? how far Lancaster, Pennsylvania? Oh, yeah. Uh, what, yeah. What, what, what it? <laughs> exactly that, though. Yeah. Land, Landover, Maryland? Yeah. Michigan, that, Virginia? That is, that is, uh, that's going to blow a lot of chicks' minds. All right. Big thanks for watching. If you made it through this whole episode, that means you should be subscribed. There's so many of you out there who watch and don't subscribe. So make sure you are a KFC Radio subscriber. Make sure you get all the content when it drops. Click that button now. I have nine fingers. I'm still subscribed. It's that easy.